Okay. Uh, one more. One more. We have to. Uh, come on. We have to balance the balance sheet. So let's make this one an acquisition. Six. And address the truly exciting subject of the balance sheet. Can hardly wait. Ready for some swearing on this one. Okay. What happened on my file? Okay, and let's first go to our acquisition assumptions. I think let's make a pro forma balance sheet first. So to make a pro forma balance sheet, I'm going let's I think we can cheat a little bit on this. The three things we need two things we need are just the sources and uses statements and uh, oops maybe if I move this back over one we'll get it and along with the sources and uses of fund statement now the reason I'm doing it like this is remember uh, if we change the date up at the top, so let's make it the 4th August of 1916, okay, everything changes, it finds new balance sheet values and all of that, okay, uh, I'll undo that, okay, and uh, we'll, we'll have our number one thing here and our number two thing here. Okay, and the equity issue, remember, that was our big important thing. And now let's, I'm going to do this very simply for the goodwill analysis. That's the second part of it. Okay. We can always reformat this later. We start with our consideration. C O N S N. Okay, and we take away, what was our consideration? We can get it right here. We take away the book value. Value of the company. And I think we, I think I computed that up here. I think we got the book value up here. That's the value of the equity of the company. So we're paying a whole lot more than the book value and can add these. I should have made alternate net. enter to put a net. Now after that, you were supposed to add the uh, uh, asset write-ups or take away the asset write-ups rather and make deferred tax adjustments and all the rest of it. But for now, let's just go to our um, balance sheet and we'll start with uh, an initial balance sheet. Okay, so now this will be our pro forma balance sheet. And we just this time I made it fairly simple. We just have to in, we have to why don't we before we do this let's make our trick. Let's put our uh, index of the, the uh, this one and get the index and then go to our acquisition assumptions and get the right row number and can we uh, place an F4 on that row, row number and just get the existing balance sheet. Not so difficult, is it? And then now let's just put a line item for goodwill. And I think we should also put a, another line in for, uh, uh, we could call them, what you call this, uh, unamortized fees or uh, debt acquisition cost. I'm going to call it Unamortized uh, debt fees. Okay, and let's see. 
So these will be filled in, and this is a existing. Okay, and then let's let's do some accounting adjustments, some debt adjustments, and some equity adjustments to get a total. Okay. So the accounting adjustments will be the goodwill, and I also think we should add in the unamortized fees. Let's put that on the balance sheet. Those debt fees go as an asset. Okay, we could call them unamortized debt costs, uh, something like that. And then the the uh, debt. We first put a minus on the amount that's retired. We can't forget the retired debt, and then we add in the amount that's issued. The equity we put a minus on the amount, or we have that as a minus already. The amount minus, and then you add in the amount of the new debt equity that was issued. But you have to do one other thing, and that is since the accounting change, any advisory fees. Get written off into retained earnings. So now we can just kind of add things together. We could have done this as a cash-free transaction. Perhaps we should have taken out the, the cash, but I left it in there. Okay, so um, uh, we have a total uh, adjustments here of this much, and then we sum up all of this. Okay, and ah, let's press Alt equal, and ah, the, our little pro forma balance sheet, uh, our little pro forma balance sheet balances. Okay, and again, if you would have taken this from another uh, year or another period, it would have still worked. Now, to get our balance sheet going forward, correct. Let's copy these titles into the uh, into our acquisition model. I suppose we can put it right at the end. Okay, and let's just lay things out. I hope this won't be uh, too too boring. So we can put our balance sheet items, and I'm. Kind of half violating the principle, but I don't think so. Let's put our cash balance. That that every item should be identified. So we're almost cheating. Accounts receivable. Okay. And let's for each one of these. Did I start in the right? I think. I think we need to start like here in this section. So let's get our cash balance. And this cash balance, since we didn't do anything with it, it just holds flat. That's kind of the thing we were talking about before. Our accounts receivable balance. We start with this. And we take this one and we add in any uh, changes in working capital. Okay, that's not so hard. And then the goodwill. Now, notice I'm not doing the net plant. That just kind of sits out there. All right, and uh, that. Ooh, I should have really taken this from the end. And this is a total adjustments. Excuse me for doing this. This was adjust total. Ah. And then we have a total. Perform. That's what we really should have taken. Is this plus this one? Can you excuse me? <laughs> I knew I was going to do all this stuff wrong on this one. Okay. And but that didn't really make any difference, luckily. So our goodwill, we assume generally that we have no. Impairments, so we can just copy that across. And why don't for the net plant, 
Okay, I'll start with our balance. And this is where we really should have made an adjustment to the depreciation for our additional capital expenditures, but I didn't. I feel very, very guilty about this. I can't tell you. So, but we'll take that. We'll add in any uh, capex we have and take out any uh, depreciation. Why is the capex so close to the depreciation? Hmm. Okay, and then now, well, let's just link these up. <laughs> That's kind of silly. Okay. The goodwill is the biggest thing on our balance sheet now. Oops. I'm sorry. Um, okay. Good, we will uh, work in capital and our unamortized fees. You know, I didn't amortize those to income. Another horrible, horrible thing that I should have done. Huh. Uh, now I'm violating every rule I have, but I want to get finished with this video. Okay, and then we can uh, alternate equal. And now let's get the equity balance. <sighs> and this equity balance is our uh, starting point of the pro forma balance sheet. And we go up with the income. We go down with the dividends, which only occur in that kind of out here, okay? And finally, the debt balance. Well, let's just put our equity balance here, and our debt balance has to be the sum of the both debt issues that we had, which were the acquisition debt plus the uh, closing balance of our revolving credit. Agreement. So, I'm stopping the video because the first one is Okay, the mistake I made was a bad one. I should have put the equity in this line instead of that line. So I had the wrong starting uh, equity balance. That was really kind of... Uh, those are the kind of things that can drive you crazy. It didn't take that long to get right, actually. And then the rest of the balance sheet balanced. It actually did. Okay, and again, there were a few things that, that I'll... Uh, clean up like the amortization of the fees and the depreciation and all that, which the depreciation, remember, we have to be so careful about. That's kind of a whole nother subject. But now we've really been through the whole kind of acquisition model. It hasn't really been that difficult. Some of the tricky parts are getting all the timing right. You can see, most importantly, again, that you get different answers depending on what perspective you you really have which uh, I think is a is, is, is maybe the biggest deal okay so that's that one and I will uh, save this one and you will have your wonderful opportunity to uh, do your do it yourself okay